Welcome to Naresai Technologies. This is Ram Chandar. In this video, I am going to discuss about one of the very important concept, especially from Java 1.8 onwards, that is how many ways can we able to provide implementation for interface. So, basically before 1.8 also we have this concept, we can able to develop this concept by using two ways. One is by writing a separate class and that class implements of interface, in that class we are going to provide the implementations. Another one is anonymous inner class, by using anonymous inner class also we can able to provide the implementation for interfaces. From JDK 1.8 onwards, we have two weapons added into Java language, those are method references and the one is lambda expression. That means, from JDK 1.8 onwards, we have a four approaches to providing implementation for interfaces. So, approach number one, by writing a separate class, second one is by writing anonymous class by writing lambdas, lambda expression and last one is by writing method references. So, like this we have a four approaches, one is by writing separate class and second one is by writing anonymous inner class and third one is by writing lambdas and fourth one is method references. Now, let me start with by writing separate class, very simple. So, before going to talk about a separate class, let me give a quick review on top of interface. Basically, in Java language, interface is designed for providing a rules or specifications. And these rules or specification always coming in the form of abstract methods. And these rules and specifications or rules or specifications are followed by third party vendors and providing implementations are logic, providing implementations are logic in the form of concrete methods. These are always part of the what year class, they are always part of what year class. So, mainly interface is designed for rules or specifications and classes are designed for providing what year classes are designing for providing implementations and logic or logic. Rules always coming in the form of abstract methods, whereas logic always coming in the form of what year concrete methods. Based on this stuff, see if you want to see more and more about these uh, rules or specifications and implementations everything, you can go through my previous videos. Now, observe here, let me develop a interface. Here I have one interface, interface and the interface name is what I. In the interface, we can write multiple rules or specifications, but everything in the form of what here public abstract. We already know about this one, by default all the methods are public abstract, by default all the methods are public abstract. So, here I took two uh, rules, one is m1 and the other one is what here m2. Now, one point I want to discuss here, basically interface rules, interface rules, interface providing rules or specifications, these rules are mainly given for two people, one is application developer and the one is implementation developer, nothing but see Java application developer, these rules are given to what here Java application developers as well as third party vendor organizations, third party vendor organizations. See whatever the rules given by the interface, those rules are followed by what application developers 
After following these rules, if you are hand over to third party vendor organization provided softwares, those softwares will executing our applications. For example, assume these rules are belongs to servlet. So, servlet rules not only given to what here? Third party vendors like uh, Apache Foundation, IBM, Oracle Corporation, but also those rules are given to what here? Application developer, Java application developer. So, by using whatever the rules given by the servlet, assume this is what your servlet rules, servlet is providing some rules. By using those rules, application developer developing one application that will hand over to what your third party vendor provided organization like any web server or application server, Apache, Tomcat, and Glassface, JBoss, WebSphere, WebLogic. So, like this, lot of servers we have in the market. Once we developing application and hand over to the server, those servers will go and executing our applications. So, most of the people are having idea like interface always providing the rules related to rules to third party vendors. Yes, interface providing rules to third party vendors, but along with the third party vendors, who is going to developing the application? Again developers. So, developer, these rules are followed by developer and developing application and hand over to what? third party vendor organizations. So, third party vendor organization related application will run our application. In the same manner, see observe, if you want to communicating with what Oracle database, again we have a some rules or specification in the form of JDBC. So, those by using those rules or specifications, Java application developer developing one application that will be hand over to what your Java uh, third party vendor provided organization like Oracle Corporation provided jar file like what here OJDBC 6. See, we are we are developing application and hand over to Oracle driver. Oracle driver will uh, run our applications. So, here whatever the rules we have in the interface, those rules are not only designed for third party vendors, those are rules are designed for what here application developers also. Remember this point. Now, if any class which implements IMPL. My class name is IMPL. Class implements, class IMPL implements I. If any class which implements the interface, that class is comes under forcibility concept. So, forcibility means, if any class wants to communicating with the interface, that class must and should be provided the body. So, here my IMPL must and should be provided the body for what? I. For example, IMPL only provides the body for IMPL only provides the body for M2 method. Body for M2 method, nothing but providing implementation. Still, we have a error. Still, we have a error. The type IMPL must implements inherited abstract method like I dot M1. That means we should provide the body for M1 also. Yes, here I am providing the body for M1. Now everything will gone. No error. Now, here I am writing like uh, one SOP statements for more clarity whether these are executing or not M2 from IMPL, M2 from IMPL. Now, control C, I am here pasting here like uh, control V, now M1 of IMPL. So, according to loosely coupling mechanism, I am writing one uh, object according to loosely coupling runtime polymorphism concept. I creating like uh, I obj equal to new IMPL, nothing but we cannot create an object for interface, but we can create the reference to hold its implementation class memory. Now, I am calling the method like uh, obj dot m1 method and, and I am calling the method like what here obj dot m2 method. Whenever we writing like this, compiler always concentrate on obj type, what is the obj type here I, compiler will go and check m1 method is existed in the interface i or not yes but jvm always concentrate on what a memory here the memory is what here impl nothing but implementation class memory so this m1 method always executing from impl class if you observe the output you can understand m1 from impl m2 from impl so like this we can able to provide the implementation for interface writing a separate class and which is implements the interface i in that IMPL, we are providing what here? Logic. 
this is the first approach to providing implementation for interface in the next video i'm going to concentrate how to providing the implementation for interface by using anonymous inner class i hope you understand this video for more videos please subscribe naresati channel thank you